Welcome to Clock Tower, I'm Brandon, and today we're looking at Kaguya Set 2. We're running the Pants Salvage Climaxes with the new level 1 combo at 1 and the old Salvage Top End at 3. We're just going to dive right on in, starting at level 0. Level 0, we have the Chica Brainstormer. This is a almost carbon copy of the Hestia Brainstormer. We're able to draw one, ditch one on events, both on your turn and your opponent's. And the Pay 1 Rest Self Brainstorm but this Brainstorm salvages instead of Hestia's Search. Very effective tool in event-heavy decks, this deck being an event-heavy deck, especially when paired with the level 1 Torch event which we'll look at. Next up, we have this level 0. This card can't side attack, but it'll bond to the 1-1 event that salvages from Waiting Room when you ditch a card and be able to get the event from Waiting Room and edit. It's 3k, so it's bigger than your tech pieces, but it's going to sit at a decent power threshold at 0. Also from the new set, we have the new Eye. Two different effects that are worth running in this card. We have the Pay 1 Clock Self from Waiting Room into Clock, and the effect you get off of that is to draw one, and is also a free runner. This takes the place of the old Ricky, which is locked behind the Choice Restriction List. This takes the place of the old Ricky, which was locked behind the Choice Restriction List, uh, because we're going to be running the Drop Search with this deck. We also run the 0-0 zero, zero Kaguya. If you have 5 or more cards in hand, it gains 2k power, so it can sit at 3-5 cross turn. On play, look at the top 3 cards of your deck, add one event to hand, discard the rest, and discard a card from hand to waiting room. So it is a on play, potentially add an event to hand, and some of the hand filter, deck speed, on play. It sits at 3-5 power, so you're looking pretty big cross turn. Everything you want in a 0 with an event deck. From the old set, we have one copy of the skill of Miss Innocent Kaguya, which is a pay 3 refresh the deck. It also has pay 1 for twin drive at 0. Good way to help clean out some pieces of your deck. It gives you that free refresh if you need it for your outs. It also doesn't require you to kind of maintain board for the free refresh counter. This allows you to be able to control your deck state. We also run Trembling Kaguya. Again, this is another free runner and it's a bomb. So it reverses level zero characters. So if you have some big pieces on your opponent's side that you want to clear out, this is the way to use it. Or this also helps prevent potentially your opponent from attacking into this character. We run one copy of the Climax Swap, the Dignified Appearance Kaguya. We use the top two rearrange and the Climax Swap ability. So you're able to kind of determine either what your first triggers are or effects leading up into your attack step. Climax Swap is good, all on a good profile. We also run three copies of the Eye Bestowing Courage. This is a drop search, but on Climax Placement, you can return back to hand to give another character 2k power. It allows you to pump up your field even more, card back to hand, repeatable drop search, and it pairs with our top end combo. So an essential piece of this deck, being able to get this card on field early is ideal to be able to continually use these pieces over and over again. But that's our level 0 lineup, pretty good mix of old and new cards as we jump into level 1. Level 1 is entirely new cards. So starting off, we first have the red event, this is our 1-1 event, which we can choose two characters, give 1500 power to, and then salvage a character from waiting room, and then send the event to memory. Very similar to the mask event from slime, where you're able to pay 1, get a character, send the card to memory. But instead of searching it out, you get to salvage it out and give potentially two different characters 1500 power. So pretty solid event going into it. It pairs with the level one combo as well. The level one combo being on climax placement of the pants, you get to either search or salvage the torch event into hand. But the ability that it pairs with this card is when you play an event, this card gets 2k power during this turn. So if you play the previous event, for these are already on stage, you can give two of these an additional 1500 power, so bumping this card up by a total of 3500 power, putting it at 8000 power without climax. With climax, 9000 power, uh, that's, that is pretty impressive going forward. Um, worth noting as well that the power, you can get it on either turn, and it only happens once. So you can't play multiple events to just power pump these up crazy, but, Defensively, if you were to try field this card, one use of your torch event defensively pumps them all up to 6-5 power. As our off level 1, uh, we run this other one, 0 Kaguya. Uh, when a climax is placed, it gets an additional 1500 power, sitting up at then 7 power with the climax. So sitting then at 7k with the climax. And when it gets a reverse, you can blind stock 1. 
Climax needs to be in play for the blind stock, needs Climax for the power, so it's incentivizing you to kind of slam Climax over and over again, which you kind of already want to do with the level 1 combo, just so that we can get your torch event back in the hand over and over again. Climax is on pants, so you have a little bit more Climax recursion. I think it's a pretty solid off level 1 piece. Being able to sit at 7 without any additional bonuses with just playing a Climax is pretty important. Because especially if you have the up 1-1 one, one event to be able to power that up to 8-5, you're going to be stepping over quite a bit at level 1. And you're able to kind of get an additional plus off of that as well with that stock. So definitely a really nice off level 1 piece to kind of pair into the combo. Running this also potentially allows you to, if you're able to kind of get those reverses, spend a little additional extra stock in the mid game to be able to either control board a little bit more effectively or be able to spawn some more bigger bodies on field early. Our last piece to round out level 1 is our torch event itself. Um, you do have to have a character with Kaguya or Miyuki in name to be able to play it, uh, but you're able to look at top 4 cards of your deck, choose 1, and add it to hand. And if you don't have a blue card in memory, you could send this card to memory. Um, so you have two different pieces here that level 1 that could send cards to memory. You kind of want it in your deck a little bit. You're not really wanting to put one into memory early, especially because you want to be able to use them over and over again. But having the ability to potentially send some to memory, or at least potentially to send one to memory, is a pretty cool and important tool, I think. I think there are going to be instances in which that card might be useful, especially like a late refresh going into some of that endgame pieces. But for the most part, you're not worried about the memory with this card as much as the torch event itself, the look at four, choose one. And it's up to four, so you can be more selective with it too. But that's level one. Hitting level two, we only have the two two event. It's a money counter. You may discard an event from hand when you play this card, and when you do, your character gains the following effect. The opponent can't deal damage to you, and you get to choose one of your characters and give 2k power. So you can play the money counter on a turn and then potentially give something else 2k power. Um, notably, it's happened during counter steps, so like any on attack burns wouldn't apply, but anything that applies after the attack phase, like end of attack burn or restand, this can be pretty effective against a lot of those. It also prevents the damage of the actual swing itself. So as we look at level three, we run a uh, quite a variety of early plays here that really allows us to play a little bit bigger mid-game, playing off of some of the events that we've already gotten. That allows us to just help control the board state and effectively try to pair off into a lot of other different builds relatively effectively. First off, we have the new Kaguya from set 2. This is a 2 or less early play. On placement, you may send one of your characters on stage to waiting room. So the character on stage goes away. But if you do, you have to look it up to three cards on the top of your deck, add one to hand, send one to stock, and put the other one in the waiting room. It also has Encore. So it sits at 10k, character card Encore. You remove one character from stage, but plus one stock, plus one hand. So you can kind of filter out a card that maybe lived an extra turn to be able to put this on field, get uh, free space to put in another early play, refund a stock, add one card to hand. It really encourages that kind of leaning more into that heavier mid-game strategy. We also have the Persisting Conviction Miyuki. This is the president, this is the uh, two or less early play that when played on stage gets additional 4,500 power and nobody can use backups from their hand during the character's battles. It also has the experience condition four or more to be able to pay to ditch one when it gets reverses to send that character into your opponent's clock. So you're able to kind of effectively hard remove cards from field being able to bypass the Encore and put it straight into Clock. It has the power threshold to sit very high at 14,000 power by itself, and being able to deny backups as well allows it to be able to power through your opponent's board. It also has the potential to win cross turn as well with that kind of power. Definitely a card to be on the watch for. We also have Certain Summer Day Kai. Again, another two or less Climax and Waiting Room card. However, this is also a stock healer. So you're able to ditch a card from hand and heal to stock. Again, 
trying to encourage more early plays. One last early play, we have a 4 or more condition with the eye. It sits at 10k if you have two or more other characters, and your opponent can't play event cards during that card's battle. So you're kind of trying to prevent your opponent from being able to play those effective cards against you in those different matchups. It is also a healer. It's also on color for your colors scheme, so you're running four different versions of an early play, but you're having a wide variety of tools as to which early play you can play into and why. Two different early play conditions, so that way you're always going to be able to meet your condition to play your early play, but definitely a resource heavy mid game, in part because your top end is not as expensive. Finishing off and rounding out our level threes, we have the serious showdown between geniuses Kaguya, which is your on play heal. And your climax combo itself is a pay one, burn one, plus 2k power until the end of your opponent's next turn, which you'll kind of refund as you attack with it, so you're able to essentially continue forward the tri field of these combos with seven stock going into it. But what's worth noting with this card is it has the resonate ability that when you get a reverse with this card, you resonate the drop search and discard a card from hand when you get the reverse to burn an additional one. So you have two instances of burn one on each card. If you try feeling this getting reverses, you have additional six burn ones with three of your vanilla swings. Having those additional two burn ones is a pretty strong top end, especially only costing seven stock to make that happen. Your deck kind of just leans into closing out your opponent. And that's on salvage. So we have the pants salvage list going in. Pants definitely trying to play into the events early, heavy mid game, and then close out with your burns at the end. Overall, I think this is going to be a decently competitive deck. You have a lot of the tools that are going to be very helpful for making this deck go off. You have a pretty solid mid game to be able to kind of answer and respond to different points, different things. Overall, this deck has benefited from having set two come out and set two has added enough pieces into this deck to definitely make a sizable difference going forward. Having a pretty solid level one combo with getting the torch event constantly back into hand and being able to control your own deck state a little bit with that card. Pairing that with the brainstorm to be able to help draw into different things that you might be looking for, like climaxes or potentially drawing into more events you can effectively work together with that to get the pieces you need. We've seen this kind of pairing do well with Don Machi, and I think we're going to see very similar results with Kaguya. Ka Kaguya's level 1 combo doesn't hit that same power threshold as Don Machi at level 1. But on the flip side, they are bigger defensively than Don Machi's pieces, so there's a little bit more potential to keep board cross turn and um, be able to plus a little bit more that way. So while Damachi has to typically replenish its board every turn, Kage could potentially survive additional turns with its pieces on board. So very much kind of like a hybrid of Damachi putting it into Kaguya and kind of making those kind of combination work together. But it should probably have a very similar play style or similar... It should have a similar feel to Damachi, but with, with bigger pieces coming on board a little earlier. It should feel a lot like more like Don Machi, but it's going to play a little bit more heavily into that early play game. With that in mind, this has been the Kage list. We're going to have gameplay for it on Thursday, and then next week we're going to be looking at the decks coming into Springfest, as Springfest is just right around the corner. And we're less than a month away from our first Springfest results, so we're looking forward to that and looking forward to seeing what 2023 looks like. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time.